Picture this, you're standing 1,750 feet below one of the world's largest freshwater lakes, surrounded by walls of pure salt in a mine so vast you could lose entire cities in its tunnels. Above you, billions of gallons of fresh water pressed down through ancient rock. Below you, the crystallized remains of seas that vanished millions of years ago. This impossible contradiction, an ocean of salt beneath an ocean of fresh water, is just the first clue in one of Earth's greatest geological mysteries. How were the Great Lakes created? The five Great Lakes, Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario, hold an almost incomprehensible 20% of the world's fresh water. They provide drinking water for tens of millions of people and span an area larger than the entire United Kingdom. Yet despite their immensity, these colossal lakes are geological babies. Born in what amounts to yesterday in Earth's 4.5 billion year timeline, and the story of their creation involves prehistoric monsters, vanished oceans, and a force so destructive it defies imagination. The investigation begins in those ordinary-looking industrial buildings beside Lake Huron, where miners descend nearly a third of a mile into darkness. What they find there shouldn't exist. Trillions of tons of salt, the largest underground deposit in the world, stretching beneath Lakes Huron and Michigan. Pure white corridors of crystallized brine, extending for miles in every direction. A subterranean maze carved from the corpse of an ancient sea. The salt tells a haunting story. Hundreds of distinct layers stacked like pages in a history book, each one marking a cycle of evaporation and refilling. Scientists now know this sea dried up and refilled hundreds of times over millions of years before finally disappearing forever. Today, 35% of North America's salt comes from these ghostly deposits. Salt that melts ice on frozen highways, salt that seasons food, the residue of seas that vanished when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. But here's the puzzle that kept geologists awake at night. This salt should have eroded away millions of years ago. Salt is soft, soluble, vulnerable. Why is it still here? The answer lies in what protected it. A vast bathtub of rock, so impenetrable it has held fresh water above and preserved ancient salt below for eons. Like porcelain lining a tub, this rocky basin cradles three of the five Great Lakes. But what created this basin? Geologist John Zawiski found the first clue on a small island at Lake Huron's edge, in rocks that dozens of other scientists had walked right past for decades. They were fossilized sea sponges, perfectly preserved heads of giant lime-secreting creatures that once built massive coral reefs. Using teams of divers, Zawiski mapped an ancient reef hundreds of feet thick, extending deep below the lake floor. When he dated these fossils, the number was staggering. 385 million years old. Back then, North America lay in the Southern Hemisphere, just south of the equator, covered by warm tropical seas that stretched to the horizon. Year after year, coral died and decayed, forming layer upon layer of soft limestone. But then something changed everything. When the salty seas finally evaporated, their concentrated brine seeped into the uppermost limestone layer, triggering a chemical transformation that turned it into something entirely different, dollar stone. A rock so hard it could withstand almost anything nature threw at it. To demonstrate the difference, Zawiski performs a simple but dramatic test. He pours acid on soft limestone and it fizzes violently, dissolving before your eyes as carbon dioxide explodes from the rock. Then he pours acid on dollar stone. Nothing, barely a reaction. The dollar stone just sits there, impervious, indestructible. This cap of super-hardened dollar stone would become the foundation of three Great Lakes, forming a basin that could hold water and a rim that would create one of Earth's most spectacular features. Niagara Falls. 3,000 tons of water per second crash over Niagara's Dolostone Cliff, emptying excess water from four of the five lakes. But this thundering curtain of water 
is more than a natural wonder. It's a clock and it holds the key to dating the lakes themselves. Charles Lyell, one of geology's founding fathers, figured this out in the 1840s. He noticed something remarkable. The falls were moving. The relentless water was wearing away the cliff face, causing it to collapse and retreat upstream. Beneath the hard dola stone cap lay softer rock called shale, which the water slowly eroded, undermining the ledge until massive blocks of dola stone came crashing down. Each collapse moved the falls a little further back. Lyle realized that if he could measure how fast the falls retreated, he could calculate when they started. His math was simple. The falls had begun seven miles downstream at the Niagara Scarpment. If they moved one foot per year, they must be 35,000 years old. But Lyle guessed wrong about the rate. Modern measurements revealed the falls actually retreat at an astonishing three feet per year, making them just 12,000 years old, a mere instant in geological time. If the falls were only 12,000 years old, that meant the lakes themselves were equally young. But what could have created five enormous lakes in such a short time? What force could be that powerful? Geologist John Menzies found the answer written across the landscape in strange teardrop-shaped hills called drumlins. Some were small and fat, others stretched nearly a mile long and 150 feet high. One particular field contained between 60,000 and 80,000 drumlins, all pointing in the same direction, north toward the source of whatever created them. The culprit revealed itself 4,000 miles away in the Swiss Alps, where massive glaciers flow down mountain valleys like rivers of ice. Glaciologist Andreas Bauder measured their movement over 10 feet per month, driven by incomprehensible weight. A mile-thick glacier weighs 3.8 billion tonnes per square mile, the equivalent of 59,000 fully loaded super tankers. This crushing weight pushes the glacier forward and rocks frozen into its base act like bulldozer blades, scouring everything in its path. When the glacier retreats, it leaves behind those distinctive drumlin hills. But here's the problem that stumped investigators. The Great Lakes cover an area five times the size of Switzerland. No ordinary glacier could have carved them. They needed something bigger, something that would break every record and defy all logic a prehistoric monster. The evidence was everywhere once they knew what to look for. Giant granite boulders weighing 80 to 100 tons, sitting impossibly in flat, sandy terrain, carried hundreds of miles from northern Canada. Deep scratches gouged into bedrock by rocks dragging beneath moving ice. When scientists mapped these features together, an extraordinary picture emerged. Not a glacier, but a continental ice sheet one mile thick and over 2,000 miles long, stretching from the North Pole to Chicago and New York. But even this wasn't enough to explain lakes over 1,300 feet deep. At Scarborough Bluffs near Lake Ontario, Menzies discovered dark organic layers sandwiched between lighter sediments, proof that ice ages had returned not once, but up to 10 separate times each new ice sheet carving the basins deeper and wider. Then came the final revelation. Digging back 2.5 million years, scientists found evidence of ancient rivers whose paths exactly mirrored the positions of today's lakes. These rivers created valleys that funneled the advancing ice sheets into fast-moving super ice flows, dramatically accelerating erosion. The coarse sediments left by the rivers acted like ball bearings, lubricating the ice's movement and transforming it into a destructive force that gouged out everything down to the hard dollar stone floor. The case was solved for three of the five lakes, but Lake Superior remained an enigma at over 1,300 feet deep. With more than half its floor lying below sea level, it was the lowest point on the North American continent and far too deep to fit the theory. In 1987, geologist Henry Halls led a daring underwater expedition to Superior's dark, unexplored depths. 
15 minutes down into complete blackness, the submersible's pilot noticed something strange on his instruments. Echo sounds coming from all directions. Then they saw it, a vertical rock wall actually hanging over them, a formation that shouldn't exist in a glacially carved lake. What they discovered that day would rewrite everything scientists thought they knew about Lake Superior, revealing that its creation involved not just ice, but violent forces from deep within the Earth itself. Forces that nearly tore the continent apart. The greatest of the Great Lakes wasn't just carved by ice. It was born from the planet's own attempt to split North America in two. A geological near catastrophe that happened over a billion years ago, leaving a scar so deep that even mile-thick ice sheets could only make it deeper. The Great Lakes aren't just bodies of water. They're windows into Earth's violent past, monuments to vanished oceans, advancing ice sheets, and forces that shaped continents. And every time you look at their vast expanse, you're seeing the result of our planet's most dramatic transformations, a mystery written in salt, stone, and ice.